And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Miltra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple, creator of the of the upcoming uh, pro the upcoming RPG Nightmare, the one and only Tanner Dutter. How are you doing today, man? Pretty good. Glad to be here, Mildred. Yeah, thank thank you for ha thank you for having me on. Or th um, so I'd like to start at the humble beginnings, in a sense. Walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games, and what was it that made it stick? It was early high school, and I stumbled upon my friend's father's D&D uh, &D books, and I, I just loved the idea of adventure, of adventure and going to different worlds and, you know, just doing these things that we could never, never do. Unless we, we you know, we role play, and it was a big mess because they had, you know, advanced Dungeons and Dragons and the Red Box, and so I, I was trying to cobble this thing together, but I, it just didn't work. And then through high school, I uh, played World of Darkness and Call of Cthulhu, and you know, really branched out from there. And what what I really liked is just how it can just bring strangers together. Mm -hmm. And now that be that being said, it 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 going from something like D and D Redbox to Nightmare, which is which seems to at least from my assertion has have um far more of a gothic horror leaning. I'd like to take a couple stabs in the dark. At any point, did you ever did you ever mess around with um, campaign settings like Ravenloft or Midnight? Oh, absolutely! Castle Ravenloft, just in all of its uh, incarnations, you know, Expedition and Three Point, and the recent one, mm -hmm. it in Fifth Edition, it's it's just uh, you know a, a staple. I would think I yeah. I don't know much people that haven't at least tried Ravenloft or. Of this setting, uh, I believe their uh, the nineteens was the uh, the Red Death, mm -hmm. and it it really opened it up to me, and that was kind of like the segue into Gothic horror. Yeah, um, Midnight is it? Midnight was a third party. It's still in that Gothic horror thing, but it's more, but it's more of this is the world when after the bad guy won. Yeah, and then you're just uh, kind of trying to globe trotting, trying to figure it all out. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one. That's one way. the The better, um, the better designed ca um, campaign settings are ones where you can take where you can take multiple avenues. Sandboxing, yes. Mm -hmm. But were you mostly a were you mostly a D and D guy through through a lot of your um, time with RPGs, or did you experiment around with other systems? Well, uh, that's I think that's where a lot of people get their beginning is in with uh, Dungeons and Dragons, and that's definitely where I started. But yeah, I uh, experimented in a whole bunch of just crazy things just to try things out. The D6 system, you know, uh, Gamma World. There's so many I can't even remember. There's some uh, that were just cards, you know, uh, Star Wars. It just I was just interested in it. Uh, five Rings, just you know, I just wanted to try it out. I was interested in the way people handle different things. Oh yeah, I can I can definitely get that. Um, but what? Were what um what led you to go down the horror route? Um, was it was it through something like World of Darkness, or were you just a horror fan from the get go? Well, I'll be honest; it has a lot to do, or at least started with my uh with my players. 
and it might just be good because uh might just be because i'm i'm better at running horror uh campaigns than other campaigns or it could just be the taste of my players but i ended up running a lot more horror than adventure or uh mystery so and i i just loved it and you know i i love the genre itself Mm-hmm. And what what is what is even more interesting in that regard is, like I said, like I said, you seem to be leaning towards gothic horror. Was that is that intentional or 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 is that a read on my part? No, it was intentional. I uh, I think you could fill a whole house full of everybody's medieval fantasy you know and there's dungeons and dragons and there's pathfinder and everyone else is since they have an open game license everybody else has tried their hand at it so i i didn't want to make another system that was geared towards it because there's so much you know available to people in that respect and and they're good they've done some pretty uh, amazing systems mm-hmm Now, taking that into account, taking that into account, um, you had you had mentioned you had mentioned on the Kickstarter page that your game your game became less D and D. The way I read that is is it a case where you ended up starting to house rule the game and then, but and then with it with a bit of time there were more house rules than there were actual rules. Yes, it's exactly what happened. Like in combat, it, you know, it in D and D, it always is just so slow. It could just eat up the whole time, and you you, you spend a half an hour for a ten minute battle, and it just it just bothered me. So mm-hmm. I just simplified it so that people could get down to playing. Which that cer- that certainly makes sense. Now, the other that brings me to um to the lev- to um the fact that you mentioned the leveling system in D and D being, in your words, silly. Um, I'd like you to I'd like you to elaborate on that and the and what and we'll get into what approach you you're going to be taking instead, but. I do want to see where your head is at as far as your issues with a leveling system. Well, in D&D, you always you have to tailor their adventure towards the level of the party, and if somebody comes in, they got to be the right party or you got to catch them up, or if you have a great idea and you want to use a certain type of monster, you can't because either it's too weak or too powerful and, you know, Oh, somebody missed a whole bunch of games, and now they're back, and they can't play. And to me, that's, you know, everyone wants to be the 100 level warlock, because, you know, oh, that's cool, I get to be one level 100, but rarely, er, no one ever really, really makes it to epic play uh, gameplay. Some do, but most don't. And there's just a way of going about it, like... uh the old game, The Elder Scrolls Oblivion, they just have the the rest of the world level up with you, which is seems like a lot of work. Why why do that? Why why have this over, arbitrary system? And also, I mean, some encounters are just fun if if you're overpowered or weak, mm-hmm. as long as it's not crippling. So if you have a uh, a chance to take on the ogre group and you do it sort of through uh you know tactics or maybe getting somebody else to do it it's it's more fun i would say mm-hmm. <clears throat> now with that in with that in mind when it comes to when it comes to the approach that you the the approach that I keep seeing, what with that and mo- modifiers and the and the lack of classes, 
are you go are you going with a f are you going with a full freeform um, system or do you, or do you have certain archetypes? Uh, well, the, my system has gone through a lot of changes, but at first there was archetypes, and then based off of what abilities you got, it would reinforce that. But I I just did it away with it, and it, it works a lot better if the players just have whatever they want, as just a smorgasbord. And I, I put them into subclasses just so that the players could know, say, oh, I want to be a roguish character, or I want to be a warrior. And so they would look under those uh, subclasses or subtypes so that they could pick those abilities to build their character towards whatever they're envisioning. Mm -hmm. Now, the... Ne the that be that being said, and this is something I've asked other people who have um, a freeform design. How do you handle um, analysis paralysis? Because a lot of times with freeform games, you have it where you have a set of points for attributes, a set of points for skills, and whatnot. And there's the there's the issue of whether or not that one's cho one's choice in something is going to bite them in the ass or turn them into an anchor. Um, as play as play goes on, how do you mit how do you mitigate that? Uh, could you go into a little more of an example for me? My bi the biggest ex the big example that I always bring up is Shadowrun. I love Shadowrun to death, but this is an issue that Shadowrun has had for years, and it's and it's one that I've been picking on for years. You start out with a, you 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 start out with a certain with a certain amount of karma that you're going to be spending on attributes, sk skills, and so on. And there's a lot there's a fair bit of attributes and a fair bit of and a fair bit of skills, and that as well as skill specializations. And a lot of, in the worst case scenarios. People can get thrown right into that with a with a set of points without understanding what would be good ideas or bad ideas to um, convert to make sure that the stats on the sheet match the concept in the in somebody's head. Okay, well, that might be a problem at the uh, beginning, but the way the game's designed, as you play, is how you level up your certain skills and your abilities. So if you're using more of one, you're you're going to level up in that area. So even if you have a, a, a concept, maybe that concept doesn't translate as well into action, but once you start playing the game, you'll see what you want because that's what you're going to start leveling up on. In that regard, how, In that regard, how do you have it work? Is it a case of... Um, ro of rolling up the way it the way it is in ca in basic role playing, or is it, or is it a case of using abilities um, puts marks on that ability and it levels up after a certain amount of marks? It's more of a the marks. So how it, how you get it is you accumulate uh, experience points, right? Mm -hmm. Every time you fail at that skill, it go it gains a an experience point and then when you have enough that matches the level of the skill or the ability mm -hmm. it automatically levels up and then it resets so as you're and you get it by this uh, by failing at this check so when you start getting better and better it gets harder and harder to improve because you're not messing up mm -hmm. now with the now, taking that into account, when it comes to I know I know that you're going relatively um, freeform, but do you have do you have it where there's a at where there's a um, ability and skill and skill dynamic, or do or do you have it relying solely on skills? No, it's a, it's a mixture. I sort of think of them as perks or feet, and then. After a couple, uh, like a, I would say, an adventure or a story arc, your character 
gains uh, an ability. Mm-hmm. So uh, and these abilities are just, you know, little boosts in certain areas that, that help. And you just start accumulating them, and they kind of, you know, help develop your character. Mm-hmm. Now, with that in mi- with that in mind, have you have you give have you given thought to putting a few sample archetypes so that people come so that people coming in um, have something to bi- have something to build around at the start? In the beginning, your uh, I have I have placed uh, a certain number of backgrounds mm-hmm. that just give you uh, you know seven skills. And sort of a backstory, and a uh, each one comes with a single ability that's uh, related to that background. And the whole system is really designed for the player and the game master to really design what they want. So if they're like, "Oh, I don't like your your security guard. I don't think you should have these skills," he could just swap them out and put whatever else he wants there. And I wrote the rules to encourage that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, the other thing that the other thing that I'm that I'm consider that I'd like to be that I'm a bit curious about is in regard to your core mechanic. As ev- as at the end of the day, when it comes to when it comes to the, when it comes to rolling the dice. Um, there's a very all roads lead to Rome ki- kind of thing that goes on with with most games, and I know we've talked we've talked about your relationship with D and D. Are you using are you utilizing a D twenty system or are you utilizing a um, die pool? What sort? What is the core mechanic that Nightmare is going to have? Well, it's. It uses 4d6 or a d24. I I did the d46 uh, just in case, you know, you, you can't find a d20. That doesn't seem to be a big problem in, you know, the current day. But that was what my mind is. And, yeah, it, my system's definitely got a uh, influence from other jams. I'm not, I'm not claiming... You know, it's groundbreaking, but it's a, a simple mechanic is roll equal or below. So, is it, so when you said, so it is, you said 4d6, so it's rolling, so it's rolling that and trying to get a number, un, trying to get a number, a total number under in a, tar, a target? Well, the way it would work was, let's say your uh, character has a strength of 15 and they are trying to climb something and then uh, the climb skill is based off of strength so you would take your your character's strength level which is 15 and then that would be the skill right that would be its starting level and then it goes up or down based on how much you use it and then whatever your climb skill is you'd have to roll that or below and if you roll uh, one to four is an automatic success, and if we roll a twenty-four, it's a critical failure. All right, I can, I can get I can get behind that. Um, and I'm I'm guessing that there isn't a very large number of skills. Uh, n- there is a, a great number of skills. I got over a hundred skills right now. I, it's just unlimited. It's, you know, whatever you really, you want, you know, mm-hmm. because I don't feel that I I need to tell people what skills they want because they can have simpler skills, you know. They could have like a, a fourth edition of Dungeons and Dragons where it's just, you know, these areas and it covers all that area. Like mm-hmm. athletic, instead of having jump and run and, you know, all these different skills. But uh, I I felt since people are are looking for this system and they're willing to give some money for it that I owed them something so I I just put down a whole bunch of skills. All right, I I can get I can get that. Um, 
And it's de it definitely it, it definitely fits with. Given that, would it be fair of me to say that your um that what in using the athletics example, the skill level that you have for climb would in would increase the number you have to the total number you have to roll under. Say that again. Would the way that attribute and the way that um that core abilities and sk and skills work would your rating in a skill increase the to the um total amount or the total amount that you'd have to you'd have to try and roll under yes if the skill raise but uh let's say your character is is making a lot of strength checks so his his attribute of strength is going up that wouldn't it, uh, retroactively affect his skill. Once a uh, play starts, they're separate. All, all right. Um, now you had also mentioned having a ma having a magic system that is on the dangerous end on the dangerous end of things. So, given th given that, is it? Let me ask the first part of the first obvious part: Is magic use a skill? No, though it does require some skills. Okay, so in that regard, um, how is how is the magic system working in your system, and how would you have it um, maintain that level of danger that you're shooting for? Well, first off, uh, magic in. It's in the, my system, since it's a, like you said, a gothic sort of modern horror, mm -hmm. is is not pleasant. It's not natural to the world, and introducing it is, you know, introducing chaos into the balance of things. So, how it works is that first you uh, perform a ritual, and that ritual, you have to perform it right to uh, draw a spirit. And you draw a spirit, there's you know, numerous spirits, you can create yours, but um, I included some, you know, just so people have something to use. Mm -hmm. And uh, you would go about it, you would give it... Let me draw it up real quick. All right, I think I, I, think I see where you're leaning at, but go, but go on. Hold on, you just... Uh, yeah, let me... I don't want to... Forget something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first, your character would put down a uh, a ward, right? Mm -hmm. And this is all just narrative. It's all covered by a number of arcane checks, which are skill checks. So they put down a ward, which is basically a sigil, which represents the spirit's name for protection. Mm -hmm. And they get into it, and then they'd offer some type of tribute to it. It might be an idol it you know it might be uh, a small animal and then they would say some type of incantation and it might be you know uh, demanding the appearance of the spirit a prayer or just speaking its true name over and over mm -hmm. and if, if you do it correctly the spirit will arrive and you make a pact and basically you can uh it wants something from you. It uh, it's not usually very much, but uh, usually it's some blood, right? They're like, "Hey, I want some of your blood, or somebody else's blood, or do me this favor, or whatever." It's you know, I put it down as a, a default. They you have to give it a blood sacrifice of yourself. You know, you cut your hand, drain the blood on the sigil, and it will perform various spells. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, the spirits have a lot of power, but uh, they uh, have to, they're bound to not materialize in, in this world. So, to do it, they have to briefly possess a person, and through them, they use them as a focus, and they only have so many abilities or, or sorceries. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once you, uh, the character arranges that with them, and they meet on it, and then the spirit will will perform it. And in that regard, do you 
are you putting in a f are you going to be putting in a few example spirits in some of the spells that they'd have access to just to give G Oh yeah, I got own? uh I got uh Botus, which is a big snake demon. I got Father Rot, which is this this spirit that's just in this rags and bugs just crawl all over him and he never shows his face. He always has a mask on, so mm -hmm. you know. And then I got uh, Gogoleth, which is this just nasty shadow spirit that's always smiling at you. And I got the Watcher, which is just this big ball of tentacles with a giant eye. And he's just arrogant. He's just, when you summon him, he's just kind of sitting there insulting you. He's like, yes, mortal, I'm here. What is a trifle, you know, you want me to do? And th the real interesting thing I like is that when you fail to... To summon these guys, you have to roll for taint. And you can, this taint could be minor or it could be real bad based on how bad you messed up. Mm -hmm. You know, you could slowly morph your character into a monster. Yeah, I, get, I, can, get I can get behind that. Now, that, that being said, with it. One of the, your uh, given that this is going to be a horror a horror leaning game, um, obviously the uh, obviously that would uh, that's go that is going to uh, that is going to mean just as much that it that it is <sighs> that it that it has a degree of lethality and how do you, how do you maintain that lethality within the within the um, way combat and conflict is going to work out. Well, your character uh, has has low health points. He it's just you know you can't you can't have a hundred hit points and then be afraid of a dragon. It's 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 not going to happen. You know you're gonna. So the key is to keep your character. Vulnerable, but le still give him some room that he can't. He can still go and do things because if it's it's too lethal, then your character's just gonna get hurt all the time, and then he's gonna have to wait and heal up, and then don't get a play. That's not fun. Mm -hmm. So I have three wound degrees, right? I got uh, well. Let me make sure I'm saying them right. I've changed them a couple times because I didn't like the sound of, mm -hmm. of the words I was using before. Yeah, because that, that was going to be the other thing I was going to ask, is whether, whether or not you're going with hit points or going with wounds or a mix, and it sounds like a mix. Yeah, it's... Uh, so, I, basically, there's... This is three wound penalties, and I got bruised, which your character heals one after each each hour of in-game playing. He just gets that up, that uh, hit point back or health point, and then hurt, which is more like you got lacerated or you know you got a black eye, and that takes a day to get back uh, a health point, and then. You got injured where you got broken bones and internal bleeding, and that takes weeks to uh, reheal one, mm. one health point. So, if you got uh, your character can basically just stop and do first aid for for wo uh, bruised wounds. So that's the uh, the fuel, right? So you got enough to kind of limp through some adventures, and then but you got to manage it. So. If you if you're real hurt, you're injured, and you're you're limping along, you can still do things, but you better be careful because the bruised health you might be able to take one hit, but you're you're not gonna uh, survive a, a heavy encounter. Mm -hmm. Now, with that with that in mind, there are s some games will have some sort of um, some sort of limited extra effort resource. Um, 
for for example in for example void points in Legend of the Five Rings, um, at edge in Shadowrun, willpower in World of Darkness, um, hero points in um, mutants in mutants and masterminds and a bunch of a bunch of other different games, Moxie in Eclipse Phase. Do you have anything like that in your system? No, I, I don't. I have I have luck points where if you invent invest your character to go in that direction, he starts picking up luck points and he can re-roll his rolls or somebody else's rolls or get more back when bad things happen to him or he can he can store critical uh hits mm-hmm. and use them as re-rolls later. But uh it's not a sort of there for everyone. All right, I I can get that. A lot a lot of times when you ha- with games that have a set a setting that's themed around dealing with the creatures that go bump in the night, it's not uncommon for um for them for them to be some some member of a structured or loose organization. One of the bi- one of the big examples that comes to mind is the numerous factions within a game like Hunter the Vigil, or its predecessor Hunter the Reckoning. Within Nightmare, do you have something like that, or is it just a case of these people are Joe Blows who go out and hunt? It's really left up to the, uh, the DM. I might release uh, supplements with more abilities and updated rules or something along that lines, but this is really just the core mechanics, mm-hmm. and it's it's open for whatever world the DM wants to build. So... I, I don't like to to box them in to say, oh, you gotta like in in the the Chronicles of Darkness. It's basically the God Machine, right? And that's it's either blocking God or God's a machine or whatever. And that's the storyline. I don't like to do that. Mm-hmm. To I don't like you know to say, hey, that's what's going on here. You have to go by that. I I would like to give them some. Uh, examples but i don't think it's necessary Mm -hmm. and something one particular um pitfall that can happen with freeform games is in regard to built building up um encounters not in terms of balance but in terms of what would be a good what would be a general range to to um utilize so that you don't have gms throwing um, players against monsters that they really should have no business um, dealing with. Do you have? It really any... goes. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to ask. Did you? Do you have any sort of guideline for G for GMs in that regard? Well, it really, really uh, depends on what type of campaign you want to run run if uh you want to run a a slasher sort of fill or a one shot then the monster might need to be overpowered where where it doesn't wipe them out but the player characters can't really fight them they can delay them they can stun them but they can't overtake them or at least not at the beginning so that's a much different fill than like uh, Buffy the Vampire Supernatural, where they show up and they're like, "I'm gonna kick this, I'm gonna bump back against this thing that bumps in the darkness." Mm-hmm. And so it's really, uh, really up to the DM for that. And then what I would do is, I would run a couple encounters. This has uh, doesn't have it. This is just basically the core rules and with a couple monsters just so that they could start playing. And I was going to add more of those guidelines in uh, the next book. Mm-hmm. Now, with that, with that in mind, what are you shooting for as far as a total page count for this project? Well, I was trying to keep it under 100, but it's right now it's 121 pages. So it, it just keeps on growing. Mm-hmm. And I, I come back, I trim it a little bit, and I just add a little bit more and a little bit more. So I'm going to try to keep it under 150, but we'll see what happens. 
All right, I, I can, and I will look. I will be looking forward to seeing what you come up with in that regard. But with all that said, I would like to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and putting up with all the technical shenanigans. No, thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. And anytime you see fit to return to the temple, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Uh, have a good one. Yep. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!